We need police and law to keep us safe. There is a real role for the government to play when we're talking about keeping people safe from actual criminals, people who commit murder, robbery. Rafael Manguel of City Journal is a tough on crime guy. A lot of crime is committed by the people who are getting out of prison. But now he also argues. There are a lot of laws that don't actually keep people safe, yet still have criminal teeth. For example, there's a federal prohibition on walking a dog on a leash longer than six feet on federal property. It is a jailable offense. Criminal law has exploded in size and scope. There are already a ton of criminal laws on the books. 300,000 plus. That's just federal. It's way, way too big. Part of that is because we don't take any old or outmoded laws off the books. There are still laws in South Carolina that ban playing pinball if you're under the age of 18. In Michigan, prosecutors filed criminal charges against a 10-year-old who, during a dodgeball game, threw a ball at another kid's face and hurt him. This is a kid that was playing on the playground with his friends. Bryce was charged with aggravated assault. Is this 10-year-old a criminal? No. The prosecutor said she dropped the case, yes. but that it was sustainable and she could prosecute. Anyone can be prosecuted for almost anything. It can be something as simple as lying to your boss over the phone about why you didn't come in. That could constitute wire fraud. <laughs> Taking a rake from New York State into New Jersey. That's actually a federal crime. If you ever had a rake in, your, in the back of your pickup truck and crossed state lines, you probably committed uh, a federal crime. Who cares? Nobody goes to jail for this. That doesn't mean that it's not a problem. Legal compliance is not free. It takes time. It takes money. It takes effort. It violates just fundamental norms about fairness. During a hurricane in North Carolina, Tammy Hedges sheltered some animals. The goal was to make sure that they were not out there drowning. She didn't have this registered as a shelter. Tammy Hedges is charged with misdemeanor practicing or attempting veterinary medicine without a license. The prosecutor says a passion and love of animals is laudable, but it does not excuse unnecessarily putting their health at risk. The idea that these people were engaged in the sort of behavior that ought to be met with jail time really does seem to, to belie reality. How did we get to this point with so many laws that even lawyers can't count them? I'm just a bill. Yes, I'm only a bill. We were taught that the Constitution created checks and balances to prevent bad bills from becoming law. Everyone has this idea from Schoolhouse Rock that a law gets made in a particular way. Now I go to the House of Representatives and they vote on me. That's not how it works in practice. At the federal level, 98% of criminal laws are not passed by elected representatives. They are created entirely by unelected bureaucrats who, who don't have to answer to anyone. In Denver, the Metro bar manager hauled off to jail for infusing vodka. It is illegal to infuse it yourself and then sell it. Here you've got a really creative bartender trying to come up with a good idea for an artisan cocktail and comes up with some really good concoction that his customers want. The on-duty manager was hauled off to jail. The bar manager was jailed for three days? Yeah. He didn't know that this was a crime, but it didn't matter. No patron complained because they got sick. This was enforced solely to appease some competitor who just didn't have the same sort of edge a or creativity. Competitor, another bar. A huge part of this is driven by established players in certain fields seeking to erect barriers to entry. Barriers to entry, bottlenecks that limit competition. The old businesses get the laws passed to That's keep right. newcomers out. That's right. They can afford the lobbyists and they can afford to comply with all the crazy webs of regulations. So if you've got an established cookie business, you don't want a grandma from down the street who has a better recipe than you being able to cut into your business by just making her famous cookies. So you go to the legislature and you ask them to pass all kinds of arduous rules about an industrial kitchen and all this expensive equipment that you need in order to qualify to participate in this business. And then who gets to decide? The very people who are established in this business. Is that what happened to Marisa Ruelas? Ruelas got caught selling ceviche in a Facebook group, which is illegal. She wasn't even actively selling it. It was solicited <laughs> by and sort of undercover uh, investigator in this special unit to enforce these 
really sting kind operation. of it was a sting operation. The DA's office works to keep an even playing field for businesses. At the root of a lot of the overcriminalization problem is this anti-competitive sort of nature of, of established players who want to use the government to, to, to keep them protected from competition, and that's just not right. Last example. In Kentucky, Holland Kendall gave eyeglasses to people who couldn't afford to pay eye doctors. The optometry board then announced it's a crime. If eyeglasses provided are not new, first quality, and made to meet the individual's personal prescriptions, and they need to have a license. In other words, they need to have the blessing of the established players in this field in order to, to provide a service to indigent people. Why would the prosecutor eagerly enforce this? You can't have uh, some office with a budget line um, in the state budget exist for years on end without ever actually doing anything. When you give the government this kind of power, they're gonna exercise it at some point. Overcriminalization puts all of us at risk of being prosecuted for things that we don't even know are illegal. People commit crimes all the time without knowing it because it's impossible to know what sort of behavior is criminal. When they get labeled as criminals, that stays with them through their whole life.